Let's talk to him now. Tyson Etienne joining us. Hey, Tyson. What was your reaction when you found out today that you were named the preseason player of the year for the conference? Uh, actually, when I found out, uh, when my assistant coaches had called me and told me that I won preseason player of the year, uh, I kind of was, you know, shocked, uh, grateful, definitely. Uh, I know we got a lot of talent coming into this conference this year, uh, so that selection could have gone anywhere. Uh, but I was truly appreciative uh, of the selection from the committee um, and just excited to keep going. Well, Tyson, we're going to have some questions from the media members. Tom Fenstermaker right now joining us, and he will ask, get to our first question. All right, and just a reminder to uh, use the wave hand feature in the chat uh, if you want to ask a question. Uh, first question we'll go to is Jacob Albrecht from uh, KWCH. Hey, Tyson. Uh as a team, you guys are picked fourth, even though you won the league last year. I guess we're curious now um, if that's motivation for you guys and how you'll use that moving forward into the season. Yeah, absolutely. You know, winning for me, winning preseason player of the year is cool. But at the end of the day, my team is still picked fourth um, after winning the conference last year. Um, so I definitely feel a type of way about that. I know the rest of my teammates, our coach staff feels a type of way about that. But it's cool. They picked us to finish seventh last year. Um, and we ultimately finished first. So, you know, we still have that chip on our shoulder. And we know how we ended the season last year. So we work out and we practice every day, you know, with that mentality. I know I approach every day with that mentality. I know our coaching staff does too. Uh, so my focus is more on us being picked fourth as opposed to me winning preseason player of the year. Okay, uh, the second question will go uh, with Chris Lilly from KAKE. Hey, Tyson, um, you guys have a, a strong core, obviously, and you, but you also brought in a lot of newcomers. Just how excited are you to kind of get going and uh, play with those new guys coming in? Uh, super excited. You know, fresh energy, you know, uh, fresh personalities. Definitely excited to play with the new guys that we brought in. I feel like our coach dad did a really solid job bringing in these new guys. A lot of, you know, young talent that's going to serve this program for the future. Uh, so I'm excited just for them to you know, start their journey in college basketball and, you know, for us to do great things together um, and for them to, you know, gain experience through what we do this year. Okay, we'll go back to a follow-up to uh, Jacob Albrecht. Yeah, Tyson, you said you guys feel a certain way. We know play angry is the mantra at Wichita State. Are you guys angry about the selection? Have you talked about it? I know it's just been a couple hours, but, but are you already talked to the team? Are you guys messaging around or anything like that? Yeah, we definitely talk uh, amongst the leaders, you know, me, myself, Dex, and Mo. Uh, I wouldn't categorize it as being angry. Uh, I uh, use the word that you used earlier, motivated. You know, I don't want to say we're angry. You know, it's part of the thing we can't control what the committee selects, but that motivates us. You know, everything is how you respond to any certain, certain situation. So we respond to the selection. And at the end of the day, it's preseason. You know, we haven't, you know, rolled the basketball out and played our first official game yet. So it's all he say, she say. So we don't really uh, focus too much into it. But we definitely had that chip on our shoulder and it motivates us extra when we go into practice um, and anything we're doing in the classroom, just making sure we're on point and everything we got to do. All right, the next question will be from Taylor Eldridge of the Wichita Eagle. Yeah, Tyson, last year you kind of had your, your breakout moment. Uh, now everybody knows who you are. You're, you know, you're the number one guy on every scouting report. How do you kind of prepare for that? How do you kind of, you know, adjust your game to knowing that, you know, every team is going to be scouting you so thoroughly now? Uh, you know, honestly, Taylor, uh, you know, what I what I want to do, what I plan to do in the game of basketball, this is the type of position that, you know, that I work for. I plan to be, you know, the, the top guy in everybody's scouting, scouting list. Um, and I embrace that as part of the journey. You know, in order to be great, you have to be, you have to know and prepare yourself knowing that teams are going to try and stop you. Um, so I prepare myself. My preparation is going up another level. Uh, I was doing things that I wasn't doing last year. You know, going through the draft process, I learned even more tips and tricks that I've incorporated to my routine and my regimen. Um, so I, as as I am on their scouting list, I understand you know what type of waters I'm going into, and I embrace that. I want that. I, I want that moment, and it's okay because I know that my preparation, my process, um, is in alignment to be ready for those moments. Okay, the next question is going to be from Chris Heidel from Herb FM. Hey, Tyson, uh, thanks for taking my question today. Uh, 
Talk about being a kid from New Jersey all the way out there in uh, Wichita. What's the difference between from uh, living in New Jersey and as your hometown and going out to Wichita? Uh, definitely a, a difference. You know, I spent a lot of my time in New York City, which is fast paced moving forward. Um, commuting, you know, going point A to point B, not really picking your head up. Um, being in Wichita for the past, you know, this will be my third year, um, has been a, a, it's been a change of pace, but it's been a, a change of pace that I'm grateful for. Uh, I've definitely been able to gain new perspective on life, uh, been able to be introduced to different people with different mindsets. Um, so I just take everything that I've experienced by, in my time here um, and just woven into my character and continue to learn. Um, and I feel like it makes me more well-versed as I go into different situations, you know, as I continue in my career, I'll be prepared because I know that I've experienced different situations outside of New York and New Jersey. Well, keep up the good work this year. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll have a follow-up from uh, Taylor Eldridge of the Wichita Eagle. Yeah, I mean, all the, all the trainers I talked to this year said you really made a, a, you know, a really strong impression with NBA scouts, with, you know, running the pick and roll, being on the ball. You know, being kind of a point guard or you know a, a you know a playmaker. Um, last year at WSU, though, you know you're so good at playing off the ball. You know, coming off screens, catching and shooting. How do you kind of try to, you know, uh, w what kind of marriage do you think you'll have this season with those things as you try to, you know, prepare for the NBA, but also you know try to help Wichita State win? Uh, I think you know just my skill set, the ability that I have to play with the basketball in my hand to make plays. Um, is strong, and I feel like we, uh, my coaching staff knows that we'll use it uh, during the season. We we'll also know that I'm a scorer. I've been a scorer, and you know when my team needs me to score the basketball, I'll go off the ball and get buckets too. Um, so what I, at the end of the day, like I told every reporter that I've talked to when I've been asked this question, you know I'm going to be in the moment. You know the NBA is going to come. I trust in that, and I know that. But for me, I'm here to make Wichita State uh, continue to be great to get wins and you know I'm going to play my role and do that um, and if there's any questions after I'll answer those questions too as I did before um, but my focus is on my team my focus is on you know bringing us back to the tournament um, and just helping any way I can for us to be successful. Tyson Brooke Weiss wrote in the studio you know one of the things that makes Shocker basketball so great is how close a close knit you guys are of a program you have great chemistry and just curious to know, what is the new culture of Shocker basketball under head coach Isaac Brown? Uh, I think, I, you know, Coach Isaac Brown, he's done a great job taking over from what he did last year. Um, and it's a welcoming environment. Not to say that Coach Marshall didn't have that environment as well, but IB is really, you know, he's, he's there for you, you know, from the top guy on the list to the bottom guy on the list. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a walk-on or a star player. You know, he's there for you, and he genuinely cares about you and that's welcoming as a player to know that your coach is going to rock with you, you know, ride or die. That's definitely something that gives uh, myself confidence and I know it gives the rest of my team confidence. Um, and we feel that every day when we walk into practice, when we walk into our game. So I think our culture is great. And I think that Coach Isaac Brown and, you know, the rest of the coaching staff has done a great job continuing to, you know, have that type of environment for us. And I feel like it's going to continue to serve us well. I think I speak for everybody in college basketball that we're really excited that you're back playing in, uh, in college basketball. But, you know, testing the NBA process is important. And I'm curious, is what's the main thing, your main takeaway from testing that process, talking with general managers and coaches about your game? Uh, I think for me, you know, what I really mainly took away from that uh, was just knowing that I belonged in that, you know, you know for a while. Um, if you would ask me would I be in this type of situation, Six years ago, five years ago, I'd have looked at you like you were crazy. But, you know, to, to go through that experience is to work for the teams that I worked out with, to meet players that I, I looked up to, to, you know, talk to front offices. Uh, it was definitely a great, great experience. Um, and while I could re could have remained in the draft, I felt like, you know, taking all that knowledge, gaining more experience and, and continue to brush up on some skills that I, uh, I can is going to serve me better in the long run. So just to have that experience was great. Um, all the tips that I learned, it was just amazing, um, and I feel like it's equipped me well. Thank you so much, Tyson Etienne. We're looking forward to watching you play this season. Have a great year. Thank you. I appreciate it.
such a good kid to get to know. I, I say kid, he's probably, you know, he's like probably 20. Man. Come on, yeah. I mean, he's been <laughs> playing the NBA probably next year. Uh, Mike, for you, he's not the only guy on this team that makes them go. You have another one that you think is maybe flying under the radar that will surprise us this season. Yeah, there's a lot of returning faces for Wichita State. It's going to make them good. But Kua Grant could be that. There's major Fred Van Vliet vibes I get from Kua Grant. He was a Division II first team All American, and he has a massive amount of offensive firepower in his bag. And I think you couple him with Tyson Etienne, Dexter Dennis, Ricky Council, he might be that extra gear for Wichita State to not just getting to the NCAA tournament. But that type of player that could help them advance in the NCAA tournament, he has that kind of firepower offensively. So to Tyson's point, they get a bid to the tournament. They finish the regular season at the top of the conference. They're picked fourth. And you heard Tyson a little angry about it. You know the culture of this team. What do you feel like is being said in those text messages? Mm, let's play angry. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, I love that that's still the theme of this, uh, of this Shocker team. And you know, you really wonder how high this ceiling is for this squad because when you have that kind of mentality, you feel like, you know, you've been gypped a little bit at the beginning of the season. You're like, all right, we got something to prove, you know, and that makes a team very dangerous. You know, we heard Houston and Kelvin Sanson kind of downplaying this team and Tyson saying, yeah, we got something in the bag. We're ready for y'all in the American. And now Isaac Brown gets to come in with a full kind of off season under his realm. What are you expecting for him? And how different is this now that, like, he's the guy. There's no interim tag. There's no, like, eight days before the season kicks off, I got to get this team ready. This is my team now. I'm glad you brought that up because I don't think we can talk about it enough, the job that Coach Isaac Brown did. That was a unanimous selection of him winning, really inheriting, just from an external standpoint, a very difficult set of circumstances and to get those guys to buy in not just to show up and be all in on play angry wichita state basketball they won the, the they won the conference and they got to the NCAA tournament and ev if you talk to every single one of those wichita state players they love playing for coach brown and so when you're talking about the transition from interim tag into now you get a lot of those players back it's going to make your life not easy, but easier leading into year two. Well, let's talk with Coach Brown now. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Excited to see you guys tip off this season. Just take me into what it's been like behind the scenes to now have an entire offseason and practice schedule under the way that you want to do it this year. It's been good. You know, we've had a good summer. Guys have been working hard. Um, we added six new faces. So I think the key to our season is trying to get those young guys to buy in but those guys definitely know what it take in order to compete in this conference and we just got to keep getting better every day in practice and they've been doing that questions from the media tom what's the first question yeah first question will be from zachary braziller post hey coach how are you um just wanted your thoughts on on tyson and kind of what what's 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 the what's your favorite thing about coaching him and having him on your team? My favorite thing about him, he's a leader. You know, he's the first guy in the gym, the last guy to leave. He's a hard worker. He's always staying after practice, getting up shots. He's always asking questions about how can I get better um, offensively, defensively? What do I need to add to my game? So he's just a leader. You know, he's one of those guys that, you know, last year he averaged seven points a game. This season, he averaged 18, so he's gotten better. Seems like he's getting better every year. He went out this summer, and he worked on his game, so I'm expecting a lot from him this year. All right, our next question will be from Jacob Albrecht from uh, KWCH. I'd be, we asked Tyson about the getting picked fourth, even though you're defending champs. Sounds like he's ready to use that as, as motivation, he said. How do you handle that as a coaching staff? That's almost like, you know, free motivation, right? You can put that right up on the bulletin board. Hey, you know, coming into the summer, I, I was unsure how, how we would be picked. You know, we have a young basketball team. We got six new faces. So the fact that we were picked fourth, I, I could see that, you know, having a young team. Um, last year, there weren't any expectations. You know, we were picked seventh, 
And um, when Coach resigned, we were probably picked at the bottom of the league. So I think the biggest thing for us this year is handling expectations. So now we're picked fourth in the league, and we just got to go out and do the right things in order to compete in this league in order to try to win a championship. Our next question will be from Jason Munns from the Commercial Appeal. Hey, Isaac. Um, I am uh, curious. There's been a lot of talk uh, about uh, the changes Memphis made this offseason. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about Memphis this offseason. Anyway, I'm curious to get your uh, your take on um, the changes they've made uh, and and how you see their, you know, how you see them uh, in terms of being a threat to your uh, uh, regular season championship defense. Good basketball team. You know, they added some good pieces in the recruiting class. But again, I'm at Wichita State practice every day. So I try to focus on my team. I try to, you know, try to get our team better and talk about what we got to do in order to compete in this league. And we stress defense. We stress rebounding. Um, Memphis is a good basketball team. They got a lot of good pieces. They're coming off an NIT championship. So they're definitely one of the most talented teams in our conference. All right, our next question will be uh, from Chris Lilly from uh, KAKE. Yeah, hey, Coach, uh, you know, what does it mean for Tyson to be recognized as, you know, one of the best players in the league being, you know, the preseason player of the year? And then kind of what does his ceiling look like to you this year? I'm happy for Tyson. You know, he's put in the work all summer long. Um, he worked on his game, and he was able to get player of the year. He went out this summer, and he tinkered with the NBA. He decided to come back, and all he's been doing is just putting in the work. You know, he's been working on his ball handling, working on his shooting. He's gotten better in ball screens. He's become a leader. He's making guys around him better. And I just think he has a high ceiling, and he's definitely one of those guys that can play basketball for a long time. All right, let's go back to Taylor Eldridge from the Wichita Eagle. Yeah, Coach, we've kind of talked about Tyson's uh, ball handling and how you guys might use him more as, as a point guard or – uh, initiating offense this year. How do you think his role will change this season? How do you kind of think he can be more of a dynamic playmaker this year? I think NBA teams are looking for winners. I don't think we have to change much. Um, you know, like I said, he tinkered with the NBA this year. Um, he came back to college. He's worked on his game a lot. We're going to play Tyson as a combo guard, just like we did last year. In order to be a professional player, you just got to be able to create shots in the half court, and he's going to get a lot of shots in the half court. I think he's going to do a lot of different things for us, whether that's getting other guys involved, whether that's creating his own shot. But he's done a lot of work this summer, and I think he has an opportunity to play basketball for a long time. All right, let's go to uh, Sean Marty of the Sunflower. Yeah, Coach, just kind of with having that full offseason now uh, and now with one year on the rebelt, how much more comfortable would you say you are heading into this season than last year? I think I'm more comfortable, you know, just getting to know my team. Um, the coaching staff has done a great job going out and recruiting a lot of talent. Like I said, we got six new faces. So the biggest key for us this year is just getting the new guys to buy in. And those new guys have really worked this summer on their game. Um, they're executing at a high level, and we just got to keep emphasizing defending, rebounding, and playing with toughness. And so far, so good. Those guys are really bought in. All right, let's go to a follow-up from Jason Albrecht. Coach, not to get too much into the weeds on this call, you guys had a kickoff event last night, and you had a freshman big man, Kenny Poto, win a three-point contest. At that position where you might need a little depth, is, is his ability to shoot going to get him on the floor sooner for you guys? His ability to defend is going to get him on the floor. That's what he's really good at. He can defend. He can guard the low post. He get guys in front. He does a good job of blocking shots. He's in tip-top shape. Um, he had a good summer over in Sweden, and he shot the ball well in their summer league. Um, he can really stretch the floor at the three-point line. We'll definitely pick and pop with him. We'll run a lot of high-low stuff, but he's a big-time weapon because he can shoot threes. 
much, head coach Isaac Brown. Looking forward to watching you guys play as you open up the season November 9th against Jacksonville State. Have a fantastic season, coach. Thanks for having me on the show. Again, Mike, I mean, to me,